name is Rafael. I work on the competition between the endemic bats and the invasive introduced macaque, which uh, compete for native fruits uh, and limit, uh, and the macaque limits the food availability to the endemic bats, which means less fruit for fruit bats, and also uh, meaning that that leads to bats uh, looking for that need to look for other resources, other like commercial fruits such as mangoes and whatsoever. So that data and those results is going to be really useful for Ecosystem Restoration Alliance, the NGO that I collaborate with, uh, since they uh, try to conserve the bats and save the forest. So flying foxes are fruit bats, which have a diet that consists only out of fruits and leaves. So they feed during the night time, but you will also see them during the day since they stay in trees during the day in places we call roosts. So a roost is a place where bats sleep and stay during the day and can be all over Mauritius, usually in forests. And during the night they go out to feed in different locations all around Mauritius. The fruit bat has a very important role in the ecosystem. The problem is that you have uh, barely any, that there's barely any forest left of the native forest, except for the national park. There are a couple of very small forests across Mauritius with, with very few endemic and native plants. And there's a big problem with introduced plants that compete with native plants, and which also results into less and less native plants and what the bats do is they help the plants, the native plants, with their reproduction. So because there's so little native plants in the first place, bats actually eat the fruits of those native plants and disperse them. And dispersal is really important for the reproduction and survival of a plant, because when fruits drop down under the mother tree, they have very little chance of surviving. And when they are dispersed further away from the mother tree, they have a higher chance since there's less competition from other fruits that also drop under the mother tree. Now that's the first point why it's important to have bats in your forest. And the second one is that fruits, fleshy fruits, like a mango or whatsoever, if they drop without being eaten, they rot. Because of all the juice and the flesh that's around the seed, they rot. Bats are very good at removing that flesh and just leaving the seed. And that has, uh, so that gives the seed a better chance at survival. Less chance to get like a fungal infection or start to rot. So that's also why bats are good for the ecosystem. So they disperse fruits of native trees. I'm doing my master specifically on um, the competition between introduced animals, introduced specifically the introduced macaque, which also eats native fruits but tends to eat unripe fruits, whereas the bats mainly eat ripe fruits. So it seems that monkeys eat fruits before bats can get to them. And that's why it's important to show that impact of monkeys in the forest, since those fruits are supposed to be eaten by bats, not by monkeys. These have been introduced by people. So I'm looking at the competition and the impact of those monkeys on then the reproduction, because if you eat unripe fruits, the, fruit, the seed is often not fully developed, and will not grow if it falls into the soil. So if you have like an unripe fruit that did, and it gets eaten more easily, there's, not, there's no chance that if an immature, unripe, really unripe fruit gets eaten, it will not grow after that. Ripe fruits, uh, the seed is very hard to break and uh, flying foxes eat ripe fruits mostly. So they remove the flesh nicely, seed stays intact, drops on the ground, can germinate, grow into a new plant. Uh, so that's why it's important to study the impact of macaques in the forest because ultimately we want more native trees and uh, more quality habitat for bats. Monkeys would not be the only problem since you also have rats. You have the invasive ringneck parakeet um, and those also feed on native fruits. So there's actually a lot of introduced animal, animals that compete for resources with the bats. So in order to increase the fruit that is available to the bats, you would need to control a lot of these invasive animals. To look at the impact that the macaques have on the, 
on the native fruits. I select a number of canopy trees, which are eaten by bats generally, but also by macaque. And I put plastic mesh stapled on a wooden frame under the trees. And I raise that a little bit above the ground to sort of minimize uh, the influence by rats because they like stealing fruit that fall into the traps. And I collect everything in those traps over the course of a week that falls from the tree. So any fruits that get eaten inside the tree, they drop into that sea trap. And this is what I look at. I count the number of bat-eaten fruits, macaque-eaten fruits, uh, intact, naturally dropped fruits. And this is to get a picture of the damage that the bats or that the macaque do and the number of fruits that actually get eaten by bats. Bats, uh, bats definitely sleep during the day. Right now they're a bit uh, no, they're very noisy during the day as well, but they sleep most of the time. They also argue a lot since they right now it's probably very hot and they compete for the best spots on the tree. But they, they do sleep during the day. And at night is the time where they get very active. At night is where, when they start feeding and looking for food. And I think the only misconception that I often hear that people have in Mauritius is that they think that either the flying foxes uh, sleep in caves or and that they don't see during daytime and this is not true so they do as you can see they sleep in trees during the day and they do see during the day as you were seeing they were looking very in like with a very interested they were very interested at the people that came to visit them just now yeah so I think that's the only thing that people uh, generally do not know 